Today's lesson is on differentials and linear approximations. Uh, so we're first going to write the definition of a differential. So if f of x is differentiable and x and dx, um, dx and delta x are going to be the same and we'll illustrate this in a second. If dx are numbers, then the differential is f prime x dx. So if you think about it, f prime of x equals dy dx. So if I multiply over dy equals f prime of x dx. Okay, uh, we use this for approximations. So I'm going to use this graph here to illustrate. So essentially what we're going to be doing today is using the tangent line to approximate a function close to a certain point. So we have a point here where we have the function and the tangent line to that function. Now the tangent line is pretty close to the graph for little changes. Um, so we're going to call this x. Now typically you do it pretty close, but just for the sake of being able to visualize what's going on. I'm going to pick another point out here on the curve here. The distance from this point to the x value here is going to be the change in x, so delta x which is also going to be dx. So this is going to be x plus whatever that change is. Okay. There's two different points of interest for us. There's the actual value at that point, and then there's the tangent line estimation of the value at that point. This distance is the actual change. So this is going to be <coughs> delta y. So that is the actual change. This is the estimation. So this distance, which I'm going to draw out here, this distance is dy. Okay, so dy is going to be f prime of x times dx. It's taking the slope and the distance and, and approximating, if we were to continue at that slope for that distance, it's going to be close, uh, but not exact. Okay. So d delta y is equal to the actual change. dy is the approximate change. Uh, so we're going to calculate the differential. So if y is 6x squared, then dy is going to equal 12x dx. This dy is going to equal negative sine 5x times 5 dx. Uh, and then this one dy will equal negative 1 over x squared dx. So that's if you're just asked for the differential. If you have more specific information, then this is, we're actually finding the change. So here, dy is going to equal 3 cosine 3x dx. Now we're going to look at the change at a specific spot. So we're looking at 
pi and we have a change in x of 0 0.1. So we're really looking at pi plus 0 0.1 and we're using this to approximate what that, that change would be. So this would be 3 cosine 3 pi times 0.1. Okay, well cosine of 3 pi is going to be negative 1, so we're going to have a negative 3 times 0.1, so we get negative 0.3. So the approximate change would be negative 0.3. dy is going to equal 8 x cubed plus 1 to the 7th times 3x squared dx. Now we're going to plug in our specific values. And then our dx is 0.1. Uh, you can type all that in your calculator. We're going to get 307.2. Okay, so that's a pretty big change in y over 0.1. Let's look at a, a physical example. Um, the radius of a circle is increased from 2 to 2.02. We're going to estimate the change in area, then we're going to compare that to the actual change in area. So area of a circle is pi r squared. So we're going to take the differential. So it's going to be dA equals 2 pi r dr. Okay. So for this situation, we're going to have 2 pi. My radius is 2, and then my change in radius is 0.02. Type that in the calculator and you're going to get approximately 0.2513. So by changing the radius 0.2, we're approximately changing the area 0.25. And now we're actually going to see how does that actually compare to the actual value. So if I look at the, rate, the area of the bigger circle, and subtract that from the area of the smaller circle. This is my actual change. This is delta y. If I go from 2 to 2.02, .02, this tells me exactly how far apart those areas are. Um, and surprisingly, or not, it is very, very close to the approximated change. Uh, because we're, we're looking at a very small increase um, so we're going to look at the graph to really illustrate this. So the graph, pi r squared is just going to be a parabola. What we're looking at is at 2, there is a tangent line here. Then we went up to 2.2, 2.02, 2 .02. Okay. Okay. What we calculated was two things. We calculated, given this dx, approximately how far, so this is our dA, then we looked at what actually happened, which was our delta A in this case. So the difference between here and here. And we're going to talk about this later. The actual change was 0.2525. The estimated change, we estimated a little bit low. And the reason is because the tangent line is beneath the curve because this graph is concave up. So the, the approximation we got was an underestimate. And like I said, we'll get more into this. Okay, 
our error is just going to be the difference between the two values. So 0.2513 minus 0.2525. So we were approximately negative 0.0012 off of the actual change. Okay, so now we're going to look at a function, x cubed, at a specific location, in this case 3, and we're going to look at small changes in x and then how close the approximation um, is from the actual change. So dy, if y is equal to x cubed, our dy is going to be 3x squared dx which for all of these is going to be 3 times 3 squared dx. So we're going to take 27 and multiply it by each of these values, and that's going to be my um, approximate change in y. The actual change in y is going to be the function evaluated at the change, so 3 plus dx cubed minus 3 cubed. And then this here is just going to give us a, an idea of how close or how far it is. Because the closer this is to 1, the more accurate the estimation. Okay, So here we're going to have, like I said, this is 27. We're going to have 27 times my dx, which is 1. So that's going to be 27. If we plug 1 into here, we're going to end up with 4 cubed minus 3 cubed, which you can do on your calculator. We get 37. If I divide 37 by 27, we get about 1.370. So not terribly accurate. Um, but the smaller we make that value, the better this estimate will be. So 27 times 0.1 gives me 2.7. In this equation, if we plug that in, we're going to get 2.791. So the actual change was this. The estimated change is 2.7, so close. And then if we do the ratio, we're going to get about 1.037. Okay, so I'm going to pause and fill in the rest of the chart. I encourage you to go through and try to do it yourself. Okay, so here's the rest of this chart filled in. Uh, again, the, the smaller the delta, the better the approximation is to the actual change. For example, 10, if I have a delta of 10 and I'm comparing the two values, that's significantly different. So the change line approximation really only works for small changes in x. Okay, let g of x be a function whose graph is the tangent line to the graph of f of x equals x cubed minus 4x plus 1 at x equals 1. So we're going to compare the function value with the value given to us from the tangent line. So I'm going to write the equation for the tangent line. Got a little white space over here. So f of 1 is going to be 1 cubed minus 4 times 1 plus 1. So that gives me negative 2. f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 4. f prime of 1 is equal to, well, that would be 3 minus 4, negative 1. So we're going to have y plus 2 equals negative 1, x minus 1. And then subtract 2, negative x minus 1. So g of x is going to be negative x minus 1. So we're going to fill in this table of values. So here, we're going to plug in these values into this function. 
and we're also going to plug them in here. I'm going to use the calculator to speed this process up for us using the table. So I'm going to put each equation into the calculator. So we'll put the f of x and this is just saving us from having to hand enter each and every single one of those and then the tangent line negative x minus 1. If I go to the table I want to start at 0.7 and I want to go up by, by tenths. So now if I go to the table these are our values. So we're going to copy these down into the chart in the notes. So these are the table, the values that we get. Uh, the point of this is, so at 1, it's the same thing because the tangent line is on this curve at 1. What we're looking at is how close the tangent line approximation is to the actual value. And for small differences, they're pretty close. It does get farther and farther apart as we move away from the tangent line. Okay, the next part of this question says the tangent line to the graph f is used to approximate f near 1. What is the greatest value of x that results in an error less than or equal to 0.5? So I already have these equations in my calculator. So all I'm going to do, and there's different ways you can do this, I'm just going to find the difference. So I'll do y1 minus y2 and graph that and 0.5. Um, so we'll change our window so we don't maybe go from 0 to 1 um, because we, we want to see the point the change in 0.5. So this is just the difference between them. Yep. Okay, so if we look there, the change as we get further away um, so we're interested in the intersection there. Okay, and we get about... Sorry, I want to change the window. So go back to your window. Um, the x's I had going from 0 to 1, I want to change that to maybe 0 to 2. Because we're looking at, you know, these are the deltas here. The deltas are about, you know, it's going to be close to this. Um, so then for my y's, that's what I wanted to be 0 to 1. All right, let's graph that, and now we'll see it a little bit clearer. So this is graphing the change. Okay, and there's two values. Um, if I want the greatest value, it's going to be this one here. So when I do the intersection, want first curve, second curve, and then we'll guess. Our lights are making it glary. The reason for the guess is so that if there's more than one, they find out which one we want. Um, so it's 1.384 is the greatest value that gives me an error less than or equal to 0.5. Let f be a function defined by f of x equals 1 plus tangent x to the 3 halves for negative pi over 4 to pi over 2. We're going to write an equation for the tangent line where x is 0. So we always need a point and a slope. So f of 0 is going to be 1 plus tangent of 0 to the 3 halves. Well, tangent of 0 is just 0, so 1 to the 3 halves is 1. 1. f prime of x is going to be 3 halves times 1 plus tangent x to the 1 half times the derivative of the inside. So derivative of tangent is secant squared. So now we'll evaluate at 0. So 3 halves 1 plus tangent of 0 to the 1 half times secant squared of 0. Oh. 
Um, on the inside here, that's going to be 0 again. So we're going to have 1 plus 0 to the 1 half, which is just 1. So we're going to have 3 halves times secant squared 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So secant of 0 is 1. So we get a slope of 3 halves. So our tangent line is going to be y minus 1 equals 3 halves x minus 0. And if we want to rearrange this, it's going to be 3 halves x plus 1 is the equation for our tangent line. Now we can use that to approximate a value close to 0, so 0 0.02. So if we do 3 halves times 0 0.02 plus 1, that gives us, if we plug it into the calculator, 1.03. So that's the approximate value based on the tangent line. Okay, so here's an AP problem. Uh, we will talk about differential equations far down the line after we've done integration. Um, but we can still answer part of this question not really knowing much about differential equations. So we have the differential equation dy dx equals xy cubed, and we have the second derivative of that, so y cubed uh, times 1 plus 3x squared y squared. Uh, particular solution, again, don't worry about it, um, but f of 1 equals 2. So first it says write an equation for the tangent line at x equals 1. Well, we have the point 1, 2. The slope is always dy dx. So in this case, we're going to evaluate dy dx here using the point 1, 2. So for the x, we'll plug in 1. For the y, we'll plug in 2. And we're going to get a value of 8. Now we can write the tangent line. y minus 2 equals our slope x minus 1. That is the tangent line. Uh, we're going to use the tangent line to approximate uh, f of 1.1. So y minus 2 equals 8 times 1.1 minus 1. So this is going to give me a value of 2.8. So that's our approximation. Now it says, is the approximation greater or less than f of 1.1? So I mentioned this earlier. It's going to depend on the concavity. So if we have something that's concave up, the tangent line is always going to fall below it. If we have something that's concave down, the tangent line is always going to be above it. So what we need to do is figure out, is this concave up and concave down? And that always comes from the second derivative. So I'm going to take my point, plug it into this equation, and see if it's concave up or concave down at the point 1, 2. So we're going to evaluate at this point. So for this equation, that is y cubed, so 2 cubed times 1 plus 3 times 1 squared times 2 squared. Um, this ends up being a really, you know, a big value, 104. But the important part is that it is positive. This is greater than 0, which means our graph is concave up. So it's going to look like this. So our estimate is going to be an underestimate. Linearization is just a, f a fancy word for tangent line. Um, so if I have a tangent line, okay, which of course is y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. If we're doing this at a specific spot, let's say a, 
then we're going to have y minus f of a. The slope is going to be f prime at a times x minus a. So the linearization Uh, basically, we're going to replace this y with L of x and then add f of a over. So it's going to be f prime of a times x minus a plus f of a. Okay. Um, I'm also going to put here, and we're going to draw pictures again, of that concavity idea. If our graph is concave down, the linearization or the tangent line approximation is going to be an overestimate because it's above the line. Okay, and concave up is going to be an underestimate. Okay, and that's not necessarily something you need to memorize because um, you can sketch this picture in two seconds and it's pretty clear if it's concave down, it's above, and if it's concave up, it's below. Okay, so we're going to find the linearization of f of x at a specific x0. Uh, determine the accuracy of the approximation and compare the estimated change with the real change. We're going to determine analytically why the approximation underestimates or overestimates the actual value of the function at the given point. Okay, first, for the linearization, we need to evaluate the function. So f of pi over 3 is sine of pi over 3, which is root 3 over 2. Then we find the derivative. It's going to be cosine of x. So we want f prime at pi over 3 is cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half. So my linearization is going to be the slope 1 half x minus pi over 3 plus root 3 over 2. Okay, so now we're going to use that to approximate L of x naught, which is pi over 3 plus 0.1. So I'm going to plug that in for the x. So we're going to have 1 half pi over 3 plus 0.1 minus pi over 3 plus root 3 over 2. Typing this into the calculator, you get approximately 0 0.916025. So I'll also put that here on this line. Okay, then we're going to look at the actual value. by plugging it into here. So f of pi over 3 plus 0.1 is sine of pi over 3 plus 0.1, which is approximately 0.911616. Okay, so we see graphically at pi over 3, which is going to be um, this is pi over 2, pi over 3 is right here. If we go, the tangent line is above the curve there. So it makes sense that the tangent line approximation is a little bit higher than the actual value. We can find that analytically by finding the second derivative and looking if it's concave up or concave down. I mean, we have the graph in front of us, so we know. But analytically, we actually have to do the math. 
So the second derivative, derivative of cosine, is a negative sine. So at pi over 3, the value we're interested in, this is negative sine pi over 3, which is a negative root 3 over 2, which is less than 0. So this is concave down. Again, we already knew that from the graph. which means it is an overestimate. Okay, we're going to do the same thing here. So f of negative 2 is going to be negative natural log of negative 2 plus 3. So that's going to be natural log of 1. Uh, natural log of 1 is 0, so this is going to be 0. Okay. Then, and that, it's nice we got the graph there we can confirm. But, uh, so now we're going to take the derivative. Derivative of natural log is 1 over x, so this is negative because of the negative. 1 over x plus 3 uh, times 1, so we're good. So f prime of negative 2 is going to be negative 1 over negative 2 plus 3. So that's going to be 1 over 1, so this will be negative 1. So my linearization is going to be the slope plus 2 plus 0. So this is negative x minus 2. Okay, so then we're going to look at a change of 0.1. So we'll do L of negative 2 plus 0.1 is going to be negative, negative 2 plus 0.1 minus 2, which is just point negative point one okay then we'll compare that to the actual value one tenth higher than negative two okay plugging that into the calculator you get about negative point oh nine five three one okay so our line was a little bit less than this and from the graph that should be apparent if a if it's concave up it's an underestimate but we will again verify this analytically by taking the second derivative So the derivative of this is going to be a positive 1 over x plus 3 squared, which no matter what I plug in there is going to be greater than 0. So this is concave up, which means we have an underestimate. We have a fun final example here. A manufacturer produces paper cups in the shape of a right circular cone with a radius equal to one-fourth of the height. Specification, specifications call for the cup to have a top diameter of four centimeters. After production, it is discovered that the diameter is only 3.8 centimeters. Use differentials to approximate the loss and capacity of the cup. So we have a cup here. Our radius and height, this one's specific diameter is 4. Um, but we also have this relationship um, that r is equal to 1 fourth of the height. Okay, I'll come back to that. We're looking at the volume. 
So volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. If r equals one fourth h, then four r equals h. So this is going to be four thirds pi r cubed. Okay, now we're going to take the differential. So dv is going to be 4, when we multiply 4 thirds times 3, pi r squared dr. Okay, then we're going to plug it in for this specific case. 4 pi, the radius, if the diameter is 4, is 2. The delta r, if the, the diameter went from 4 to 3.8, the diameter's delta would be 0.2. So our radius's delta would be negative 1. When you type that in the calculator, you get approximately negative 10.053. So we have a loss of about that in centimeters cubed. So that's how we can use differentials to approximate uh, the change in things.